While I was creating my last video, I made a note of a few sayings and some advice that I really liked, and I immediately wanted to share them with friends, colleagues, and family. I always love to hear advice from friends and from my uncles who often give me life advice. Number one, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Or in other words, you are the average of your five best friends. Imagine two scenarios from your teenage years. Which would you benefit from most later in life? A. You have friends who are always getting high or drinking, out on the pool for partners, always focused on how they look for the party on Friday and Saturday, and who gossip all the time and laugh about profiles on social media. Or B. You have friends who you can go and buy stuff at garage sales with and resell it on eBay, who you work well together with so that you can both learn business skills, who you can learn a programming language with, create funny websites or video games, or learn video editing and try to make animations for uploading on YouTube. Just because you're learning and growing, it doesn't mean that you're not having fun along the way. You will still go to parties and still make new friends, but you will split your time wisely between learning new things and having fun. Number two, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Don't be afraid to be the proverbial squeaky wheel. If you really want something, you should just go for it yourself and not assume that someone else will do it for you. Don't assume that just because you mentioned something in passing a few weeks ago that there is an answer coming back to you. Whatever the situation or goal, keep putting on the pressure. Ask again and keep persisting, within reason of course, until you receive an answer that's satisfactory. For example, if you really want that summer job and have sent an email but still not received an answer, send another email. Call them. Go and visit the place. Make it clear that you really want this opportunity. This is no time to be shy. When I was arranging my mortgage for my new home, I was in talks with three different banks, so I made sure that I kept mailing and calling them to ask for an update. I understand that banking staff are super busy and they could easily forget about my case file. Maybe you sent them an email at 3pm on Friday evening and they didn't have a chance to read it. My account manager might think I'm demanding just because I'm asking for an update, but rest assured, when I ask for something next time, they'll get the job done quickly. Number three, it is a good thing, not a selfish thing, to choose people who are good for you and want the best for you. Surround yourself with friends who uplift each other, who encourage you when you try new things, the kind of people that will repost your artwork or small business on social media so that you get more exposure. Ditch the so-called friends that try to get you drunk just to make a clown of you, who records or takes photos of you when you're out of it, or who tell you that your side hustle will fail. Choose your friends wisely. It's your choice who you're friends with, so make sure you select the ones that are best for your life and ditch the ones that are bad news. Number four, have friends that will listen to you when you have bad news and celebrate when you have good news. You should have friends who you can meet or call and share bad news with them, who want to listen, really listen, without them interrupting because they had something bad happen to them too, which is way more important than your troubles. And it's funny to say this, but you should be able to share your good news with them too, without them hijacking the conversation to tell you something amazing that's just happened to them recently. Let's be honest, this is an easy mistake to make. You need to practice and train this when you're the one being a good friend too. It's simple. Be happy for your friends when they come to you with good news and be a listening ear when they've been through something bad. Don't make it about you. This is the foundation for a strong, long-lasting relationship. Number five. Jack of all trades, master of none. Everybody has talent, some area that they're able to excel over and above others, and other areas where they're not so talented. For example, let's say that you're great at programming and computer science, and you're getting top marks consistently, but in foreign languages, you always seem to get low grades. This is totally normal. So you just need to keep focusing and working on your strengths and try your best not to fail in the language classes. Be an expert in what you are good at. When you're a student in school, you can really develop strong skills that will come in handy later, so keep challenging yourself. This isn't just the case for students though. As a parent, don't focus only on your child's lowest grades and ignore the successes. You need to celebrate the successes and nurture the areas for improvement. Otherwise, your child can lose interest in school completely. Just make sure they don't fail the courses they're struggling with, of course, but keep challenging them in those areas and subjects that they love and are good at. What does this advice help us to understand? For me, it's all about forging your own way in life. 
taking yourself and your choices seriously and working towards your strengths. You can achieve anything in life if you surround yourself with the right people who will support you and you have the self-belief and the courage to follow your dreams. If you've enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe and be sure to leave a comment. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a comment on how I can improve. Video suggestions are always welcome too.